Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, a misleading poll. Also, Lieutenant Governor Ainsworth has a brilliant idea. And rumor has it, Katie Britt for vice president. But there's absolutely no truth to that old story, believe me. Old? Old, stale, I'm talking rotten. talking about today. What? Fake news? Nothing here? Maybe not. All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. Welcome to the voice of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt. And as always, I'm joined by Susan Britt, research guru extraordinaire. Hi. Hi, it's just you and me today. Yeah, it reminds me of that old song, Just the Two of Us. Just the Two of Us. We can make it if we try. Yes. All right, <laughs> we're, we're going to try it. How about we're going to give it All a right. shot. How about? So this past week, uh, the Alabama Policy Institute uh, released a poll about gaming. Now, the Policy Institute is adamantly against gaming. Mm -hmm. In this poll, they said that the people of Alabama, the, no, they said that the Republican people of Alabama mm -hmm. did not want to expand gambling. That's what they said. And they had a poll that actually proved that. Now, how they did it is through a combination of asking the right question mm -hmm. and also push polling, which right. is a way of getting people to respond to a particular question that they weren't even thinking about, basically. Right. And so what happened was they asked, is expanding gaming a legislative priority? Right. And people said, well, was it one of your top priorities? And they gave them a list of priorities. And I, let's just go through those. They said... What's your top priorities mm -hmm. for the legislature? First was jobs and economy. Mm -hmm. So 55% said, that's my, my top priority. That's you know, they gave them a list. Then they said 19% said healthcare, right? That's important. Education, 17%. Protecting kids, that was their question, 12%. And expect, expanding gambling, 7%. That makes sense to me. If you're looking at a list of priorities. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, because, of course, they're asking, is it a priority, instead of asking, is it important? Right. There's a big difference. Sure. Is it a priority for most people? No. Like for us, we don't gamble, so it's not a priority. Right. For us, a priority is jobs, uh, economic growth. You know, and it's also saying, you know, well, obviously kids' safety is second to the bottom. So are these same yeah. people still saying that kids aren't as important as the economy? Right. You can't really look at it all like that. No, it's very skewed in a certain way. Mm -hmm. You point out a great point. It would be absurd mm -hmm. to have a headline that says Republican voters do not think child protection or protecting kids is a priority. I mean, people would go, what is wrong with you? Yeah. So they set it up so it would look like this is what people were against. Then say they were against it. It said that it wasn't a priority. No one, like you said, said it was a priority. I, I, I want to look at the questions they ask and how they ask them. This is what we were talking about, push poll, and right. trying to drive for the answer you want. And, and a lot of people don't look at polling. They don't have time, but it's our job to look at polls. Right. And first of all, they didn't give any demographics of who these people were. Right. They The only thing they, which is you usually have a, ton of information about who they polled. Right. The only information about who they polled was that they were Republican. Right. That was it. Now, the questions are my favorite, though. Are you concerned about the rise in gambling addiction, particularly among young men? Do you support the expansion of gambling in the state of Alabama? It gets better. Do you support having digital gambling av available on every smartphone in Alabama? It's already there. Uh, 
The next question is, do you support having sports betting available on smartphones? It's already there. And the thing that they're trying to say is that, and people were against to have it on the, all the phones, which is, you can have that now. Yeah. But it made it seem like this is a way they were going to expand gaming. Now, when it comes to the crucial question uh, of, of do they support gaming or not, the final question being gaming expansion shows a split view. 39% supported expanding gaming, 44% opposed it, but here you go, 17% had no opinion at all. Mm -hmm. They weren't even just undecided, they had no opinion. Right. So right. that's a split decision, even by a poll of all likely of of all Republicans. Republicans. Yeah. Republicans, you're yeah. not adding into that independents, Democrats. Right. You know, some 80% of Alabama voters want to vote on this bill. Yeah. They want, that doesn't mean they want to expand gaming. It means they want to vote on it yes. and make it their decision. One of the other uh, the questions I loved here, would you support local casino in your neighborhood or community? You don't necessarily have them right now, but let me assure you that you have them in the gas stations and the florists yeah. and all in the back. Right. You already have it in your community and neighborhood. <clears throat> it's illegal and unregulated. And that's part of what this bill they, is going to address. The funny part is there are about 10, 20, 12 percent of people went, sure, bring it on. I'm excited about it. <laughs> but anyway, it, the thing is, uh, API has a right to voice their opinion Absolutely. on Absolutely. legislation. Uh, even though they're a partisan group, they have their right. What they don't really shouldn't, they don't have an ethical uh, 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 an ethical or moral right to mislead people. Exactly. This poll is absolutely misleading. And you bring up a good point. We already have gambling. Mm -hmm. uh, Representative Andy Witt has toured the state and pointed out, we already have a lot of illegal gaming. Mm -hmm. What the legislature wants to do, what Speaker Ledbetter and I think President Pro Tem Reed and Andy Witt and others and the governor wants to do is they want to regulate gaming, get rid of illegal gaming. This is not a bill that will expand gaming. No. It will contract gaming. Exactly. It will actually reduce the amount of gambling in the state by regulating where it's going. Yeah. And all of this, do you want a casino in your neighborhood, is not possible because this bill and, and prior bills to this establishes exactly where it can be and exactly how it's going to be regulated. So it's not an all out free for all for gaming. Right. It's actually pulling the, the illegal gaming in and the backs of the floors and the backs of the, and, you know, gas stations and stuff like that. So it's more controlled and it gives the lawmakers more teeth yeah. than just giving them a fine and right. sending them home to do it all over sure. again. And most many, many, many of these organizations mm -hmm. are from out of state. They are. Now there's, we only got a couple of seconds here, but I do want to get this in. There is a provision supposedly in the bill that says, they're going to have an open bidding process. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you, if you bring an open bidding process to this without some real stringent rules and regs, mm -hmm. you're going to have outside interests that have no concerns about Alabama buying these licensing and then controlling things. Mm -hmm. We have people in this state like the Porch Creek Indians and Victory Land mm -hmm. who have ran these types of businesses for 20, 30 years mm -hmm. and done them legitimately and done them and paid their, you know, paid their wages to workers and took care of their people. And have an interest in Alabama. And have an, they are from Alabama. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need. We need Alabama businesses yep. owning Alabama gaming businesses. But we're gonna leave right there. You're watching the V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. It's time, time we had someone in Congress fighting for us. As Democratic leader in the State House, Anthony Daniels helped steer millions of dollars into our district, fighting to raise wages, invest in our infrastructure, and create good jobs. Now he's passed a new law, removing state taxes on overtime pay, putting more money in our pockets. It's time for Anthony Daniels for Congress. One of us for all of us. I'm Anthony Daniels, and I approve this message. Your home is your most valuable asset. But what if someone tried to steal it from you? Property fraud is one of the fastest growing areas of fraud in the country today. As a district attorney, I've seen firsthand the devastating effects of property fraud. 
That's why I'm proud to support the Montgomery County Probate Court's REACT program. REACT is designed to protect your property and to give you peace of mind. By signing up, you'll receive an email notification if a document is filed against your property. This program is a game changer. It has the potential to prevent fraud and protect countless homeowners throughout Montgomery County. So don't wait. Sign up for REACT today and protect your home. Protect your home with REACT. Sign up today. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Soon in this past week, Lieutenant Governor Will Ainsworth and his 21st Century uh, Workforce uh, Commission mm -hmm. came out with 11 proposals that, if implemented and if backed, will fundamentally reshape Alabama in an extraordinarily positive way. I mean, it's just an amazing package. Mm -hmm. We must give uh, Lieutenant Governor Ainsworth and uh, President Pro Tem Reed and the business community that participated in the development of this plan. This is an idea of a private public partnership mm -hmm. and it looks fantastic. It does, they're gonna do so many things. Uh, they plan to maybe merge some of the existing departments in the Alabama Workforce Authority, which they're finding some duplication in there. Right. Although, they, now the Alabama Workforce uh, Authority is doing a great job. Yeah. I mean, we've got great, you know, unemployment rates here in Alabama. Yeah. You know, we do have some some leftover jobs that can't be fulfilled, but nevertheless, they're doing a great job uh, because we've got, like I said, 1.7 million people over the age of 16 that are not working. And so they're going to try to address some of these issues as well as to make it more of a legislative priority and um, to get more diverse group of leaders like senators and representatives and CEOs right. together in this to, right. to look forward in Alabama. Well, one of the things I, I thought was really fascinating to me is that some of the ideas they had for fixing these problems are things we have been talking about for years. You just took my line. <laughs> it, 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 it's just like expanding the child tax credit uh -huh. so that there are fewer children living in poverty. Parents have a way to raise their children well. You know, you, a kid can't learn if they're hungry. They right. just can't learn. And they, parents can't go to work if they can't feed their kids. But the other thing is, is developing with these businesses child care mm -hmm. so that they have a place. We know that child care is one of the most costliest parts of a oh, family's yeah. budget if you have small children. Yes, it is. It is. And so that's one of the things they're trying to do. And I think they want to take and put this whole thing under a cabinet level umbrella. In other words, the governor would be able to select uh, somebody that oversees the workforce development on a cabinet level and, and to be you know, selected by the governor, approved by the Senate. I think it would be a master stroke. Well, they're also gonna uh, tackle other issues like mental health, uh, housing, transitioning military members, back in so they right. can boost the work. Right. So this is a comprehensive plan. Right. I mean, they're going to address so many different issues, and it's it's so good to hear. Yeah, so it, good to hear. it really is a forward-leaning mm -hmm. idea. It's still conservative mm -hmm. because, I mean, you know, when you make it easier for people to work, mm -hmm. that's a very conservative idea. It's pro-business. You know, that is pro-business. And look, let's face it. Uh, we need all the help we can get in Alabama. Yeah, we do. We, we've got a very good, solid workforce, but we have a number of people that have so many reasons they can't work, right. even if they want to work. Right. They can't work. And it is things like transportation. Mm -hmm. They don't have transportation. They don't have child care. Mm -hmm. They don't have health care. Right. There's a lot of things that they need, and we can figure out a way to do that, I think, uh, will Ainsworth will probably be the next governor on that probably. one. Probably. But probably will be anyway. I just think, you know, these are important private, public projects mm -hmm. to move the state forward. Well, I, th I think it's very inclusive that they want to work with the business leaders in Alabama. Yeah. That's so important that there is a partnership between the legislature and the CEOs, the, the powerful yeah. CEOs yeah. in our state, yeah. because these are the guys with the business ideas. Yeah. 
Susan, this past week, we got an op-ed over at APR from a Riley McCardle. He is a young Republican, very active on college campus, uh, where he's at the University of Alabama. And, and, and we're really happy when we get thoughtful op-eds, cogent idea, cogent display of ideas, mm -hmm. and not yelling, screaming, being crazy, and saying stupid things. He made a very serious case for Associate Justice Sarah Stewart becoming the Chief Justice mm -hmm. of the Supreme Court of Alabama. And he likened her to a conservative icon, I would say now, Katie Britt. Right. And he also uh, likened her to uh, 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 some of the other people in our state that are great Republican. I think Young Boozer was one of them. Young Boozer was one, mm -hmm. Governor Ivey. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, I, I've heard from a lot of people that say that Justice Stewart is just the right person for the job. Mm -hmm. But he makes a case that Justice Stewart is the right person in place. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom Parker, who is uh, aged out of being Chief Justice. Right. And I, I think I trust his opinion. And I also trust the opinion of judges that I have talked to around the state. And I know you have too. I have. And she's very gracious. Um, she's very thoughtful in her not not to get in, involved in discussions that might possibly come before her yeah. in her court. Uh, she's very dutiful uh, and and a kind, compassionate person. And I think we need more of that in our Alabama politics than we do the hate bashing and the calling people woke. Well, at least she's a at least she's a lawyer. At least she's a lawyer she's who is, has experience <laughs> in the courtroom. In the courtroom. And people like her. All right, we're gonna leave it right there. You're watching the V, the voice of Alabama politics. <laughs>Time we had someone in Congress fighting for us. As Democratic leader in the State House, Anthony Daniels helped steer millions of dollars into our district, fighting to raise wages, invest in our infrastructure, and create good jobs. Now he's passed a new law, removing state taxes on overtime pay, putting more money in our pockets. It's time for Anthony Daniels for Congress. One of us for all of us. I'm Anthony Daniels, and I approve this message. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You know, Susan, this past week, uh, the uh, Cannabis Commission went again before Judge James Anderson, Montgomery Circuit Judge, who has been hearing all the nonsense. God bless his heart. Of, of how the uh, Medical Cannabis Commission has done no wrong. You know, <clears throat> and he has found against them time and time and time and time again. They, they were supposed to, on the 24th, come back with an agreement on depositions. Mm -hmm. Well, instead of doing that, what they came back with is the uh, the AMCC lawyers were trying to say, well, we're, we're not going to be deposed. We don't want to be deposed. We don't want you to depose anybody. And, and the final thing was Judge Anderson said, your butt's going to get deposed. <laughs> we're going to depose uh, six of the commissioners, including uh, 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 John McMillan, mm -hmm. because we want to know what the heck's going on over there? 
I agree with Judge Anderson, and God bless him for his patience in this matter, because I certainly wouldn't have the kind of patience he's had. But we do need to know, why are they so opposed to these depositions? Yeah. That tells me a lot right yeah. there, because obviously there's things they don't want us to know. Right. And I tell you what's ultimately going to have to get have to happen here is the legislature is going to have to get involved in this again. There's no way around it. They're not following the law. They're not following the way to select these. They haven't even been to the facilities, some of which don't exist, yeah. which is specifically in yeah. the law. So I, I think that this session, that, that they're going to have to make this a priority because this is going to drag on forever if they don't. This process did not have to be this flawed. No. But the way they've handled themselves and the process would make any reasonable person think that there's something nefarious, something hinky, something absolutely wrong going on. There's something up there. And I smell a rat. There, yeah, you I can, smell several yeah, rats, actually. That's right. And, and, they need, and when you talk about getting the legislature back in, I, I have a thought about that. One of the biggest problems that they've had is that they have these integrator license where they get to grow it, cultivate it, mm -hmm. process it, distribute it, all that. Yes. That's the big Soup license. Nuts. That's yeah, that that's the the license that only a few people can qualify for, but they broke it down to 5. Mm -hmm. And they've never been able to settle on the same 5, and the way they went about this makes you wonder if somebody in the family isn't getting paid some of this stuff. I can't say that that's true. I'm just saying it makes you think that. We'll say what the opposition <coughs> say. What I don't understand in a conservative state like Alabama, why don't we open it up for at least 10? Yeah. And and it, 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 the state can't hold five. The market will work it out. It will. I mean, we live in an economy that, that only the most fit survive. So if you, it doesn't matter if it's 10, it doesn't matter if it's 20. Those that best perform will survive as a business. Yeah. Those that don't won't. Yeah. So why are we restricting this? Yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense. The legislature could come back in and snap yeah. like that. Change that big, that's been the big issue. Mm -hmm. There's been a number of people that are qualified and they don't feel like they've been feeded, treated fairly and they have not, yes. in my opinion. And so we this would be a way to correct sure. it before. I mean, again, this process has gone on for three, almost four years when the idea was to help the pain and the suffering mm -hmm. of the people of Alabama who need this. Now, all we ever do is talk about lawsuits and who's getting money and who's getting screwed. Well, I can tell you who's getting screwed. It's the people that need this medication. It is. It absolutely is. And, you know, they're playing around, like you said, with the lawyers and with the, you know, the, the minute pieces of the law and while ignoring other yeah. large portions yeah. of it. Meanwhile, people are suffering every day yeah. that cannot get these products. Yeah. I mean, people have had to move out of state yeah, they have. to get these products that are in state after state after state after state, and we cannot get it right. No. But it, the legislature's probably going to step in I for think anything so. to happen. I think so. I want to move on to something that, you know, is, is a lot of rumor and speculation. Uh, this past week, I, I wrote about it because, and, and, and some major areas, major talking heads in Republican politics projected that former President Donald Trump would be wise to select Katie Britt as his VP. And boy, it just lit up the internet with people going, yes, she would be great. And she would be. Katie ticks all the boxes. She's strong. She's new. She's young. She, you know, is, is a go-getter. Um, so she would tick all those boxes. And I do think her one drawback with him is going to be she's a strong woman. And he is not keen on that. You know, but I think most strategists will tell you that they think a woman will be his best bet. Now, I think there's a lot of people that think Tim Scott's going to be it. But Katie would be fantastic. Now, I think for her long-term career, it probably best to just stay in the Senate and, and, and pass on that because she's 40 years old or mm -hmm. so. She'll have plenty of time for VP or even a presidential slot. But again, if former president asks you, it'd be hard to turn him down. But I, I was just kind of proud that <coughs> there were some very smart, smart people saying Excuse me. this would be the best pick. 
And and they listed all those things that you said. Hey, we knew when she went to DC she was going to be a star because oh, yeah. they've never seen anything like yeah. her. Yeah. I mean, she's energetic. She's smart. She's a go getter, and she takes no BS. You know, we got a friend from New York City said, you know, if the power grid ever goes out in New York, we just need to figure out how to hook that woman up to it, and she can light up the whole city she in, absolutely of New York could. City with all her energy. Oh yeah. But you know, we're very proud of what she's doing, and and I had a guy tell me that he would. He, he really liked the idea of my wife uh, becoming a, a the you know becoming a VP, and I made sure he understood that she was my daughter-in-law, which is <laughs> not. <laughs> but she is our dear well, friend. Wesley does she, call me she is our dear friend, and they also listed Wesley as a as a big selling point because he of course you know, former uh, New England Patriot. Uh, football player, mm -hmm. and, uh, star at football, Alabama. Former mm -hmm. president loves football players. That's his favorite team. And Wesley is about six nine and weighs two hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he's looking. He's a big look, boy. Still looking great. But anyway, I, I just you know I was kind of proud of that. Uh, you know, Very there's proud a of lot that. to think about there. And 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 Trump seems to already have a pick in mind. Uh, Tim Scott was certainly close on his coattails. In uh, New Hampshire, New Hampshire and, who was he couldn't have gotten any closer no, on his coattails. From your lips to God's ear, or yeah. something. But anyway, you've been watching the V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us because we watch them. Mm -hmm.